Hey everyone, this is Jose with Integrated Projects. The team is trickling in. Uh, we'll just wait a few minutes uh, to allow folks to, to come into the room. I'm gonna put myself on mute for, for now. Hello everyone, welcome. Hello everyone, welcome to the BMIT launch webinar. I wanna thank everyone for getting here and getting the time to join us here. Let's give like a couple of minutes for everyone to join. We have, let me see the participants. Okay. Apparently we have some people joining now. Hello everyone. All right guys, so this is really exciting. Uh, we want to announce the launch of BIMIT. Uh, I'm going to be dropping right now the page where you can access and start to see the page, how it's looking. I want to introduce, so first, I'm Alvaro. I've been leading like some of the creative and, and the visuals for BIMIT. And right here, we have Jose Cruz, which is the managing director and the founder of IP. We have also Austin leading some of the engineering. We have Pat as well, leading some of the global uh, beam networks. Suli Fernandez leading operations. And yeah, we're here. We're really excited to be announcing this one. Guys, we have folks from, uh, I'm pretty sure, almost every continent here. So super, super duper excited. I know for some folks, it's really early in the morning. Uh, for others, it's uh, you know evening time. So appreciate everybody jumping in. Yeah, and also uh, we have a Q&A section and you guys can access. It should be up there or down here. So you can start dropping some questions. We'll review them and we'll uh, um, answer them at the very end of this webinar. Awesome. So yeah, Alvaro, we'll give, uh, we'll give folks two more minutes before um, getting started. Um, in the meantime, uh, for the folks listening in, uh, Integrated Projects is live, particularly BIMIT, which is what we're going to be announcing today. So as we wait, feel free to check out the site. It's just www.integrated-projects.com. Uh, there you're going to pretty much be able to see everything we're announcing today. Um, so the um, that's the TLDR version, uh, drag and drop your point cloud, uh, and we're going to be able to help you process your model. So. Yeah, I have dropped the link in the chat so everyone can go in there and access and get to the page. Awesome. So everyone, thanks for joining in. I know uh, there's gonna likely be a few folks trickling in, um, but uh, you know, in the interest of time, we'll try to keep it as brief uh, and concise as possible. So um, again, uh, my name is Jose the Founder Managing Director at Integrated Projects. The entire team is super excited to launch BIMIT today um, and even more excited that you're joining in, uh, joining in to share this milestone uh, with us. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the too long didn't read version is BIMIT is live. Uh, so now anyone can drag and drop their point cloud uh, on our website and get an accurate LOD 200 BIM. Um, our early users and supporters are architects, engineers, contractors, developers, reality capture, uh, metaverse specialists joining us from all over the world, from Argentina, Mexico, South Africa, Spain, all over North America and Europe. Um, a heartfelt welcome to our partners who, who are listening in from the Ukraine. Uh, your presence and interest in improving the built environment stands in stark contrast to the destruction uh, being caused in, in, in your country. And so uh, particularly to our close partners there, um, not only are we standing with you, but we're uh, uh, in admiration. And so the fact that you guys are even listening in is, uh, is, a, is I think, humbling for, for everybody here on the call. So for the past four years, we've worked alongside designers and real estate professionals. Uh, the common thread that negatively impacts all of us is bad information. And so because of this, designing and building spaces, we're over budget, uh, we're past our due dates, and we're at lower qualities. By bad, we mean inaccurate and incomplete or non-existent. And by information, we mean 3D, 2D information that allows us to verify the dimensions of a space, things like a floor plan, 
uh, or a model. Um, but also we mean the ones and zeros, like the spatial dimensions of a space, the quantity of equipment, also what we call the data. Um, so, oh, so our solution is getting good information, accurate, comprehensive, and accessible, with a special emphasis on getting that information. Um, might sound too obvious or simple, but till recently, the technical, operational, and business models haven't aligned. And so today, we believe we have a solution to help speed up the scan to BIM process by more than five times, uh, cut typical existing conditions costs by more than half, and deliver a standardized uh, model. Our goal is to set out for the root challenges uh, to solve for accuracy, comprehensiveness, and accessibility. So we want acquisitions teams, leasing teams, to be looking at accurate square footage data for their leases. Uh, we want architects to use accurate existing condition plans for their, you know, to be able to redesign faster and more cost effectively. Uh, we want facilities and operations teams to be able to have an accurate asset, right, to be able to quantify, take inventory of what they own, spaces and equipment. Um, and so in order to do that, I think it's important to kind of understand like the magnitude of what we're dealing with. Uh, I heard somewhere there's more existing buildings in the world than there are websites. And so we're going to be at this for a very long time, from homes to hospitals, hotels, offices, data centers, warehouses, schools, retail. Uh, it's, it's a pretty tall order. And yet, regardless of the building type, we're challenged with some really similar things. So for one, how do I capture information from my physical asset? And two, uh, how do I visualize this digital asset to understand space and quantities? And so for the past few decades, two different but complementary technologies have like stepped in to help us address this challenge. So for a lot of folks on the call, you guys might be familiar with reality capture. So from photogrammetry based devices that help produce virtual tours, and point clouds to LIDAR based um, uh, you know, equipment to help produce ultra accurate point clouds. Um, this technology has evolved. It's become more cost effective. Now anyone can scan their home, office, hotel, et cetera. Uh, this evolution means that it's easier to capture accurate information in the form of a point cloud. What I'm particularly excited about is that the next iPhone 13 is gonna have generation two LIDAR. So effectively what now used to cost 200,000, 100,000, 70,000, 30,000, 20,000, 3,000, now down to $1,000. Still expensive, but this is a fundamental shift in who can actually capture information. Uh, the second technology is BIM, right? So we've also come a long way here from quite literally stone carvings to paper to 2D to 3D and beyond. Um, it's a big deal. And so what we believe is like when you combine these technologies, it helps us better verify and visualize the accuracy of an existing space. So what it means for us, right, designers, building owners, real estate professionals is uh, I think one of our early BIMIT users said it best. Let me see if I can read it here. It says, uh, recreating existing conditions is not a value add task for a designer or why a client would hire us, but it's a necessary step to get the design exploration process of designing within the existing space. We want tools that help us maximize the project time we're given to focus on the design opportunities. And so we're big believers that in order to best answer what should be, we need to get good at answering what is. And uh, you know, BIMIT is attempting to do exactly that. Um, so by integrating BIMIT into your 3D scanning workflow, we're taking the first step to help solve, one, how do we speed up your process? Two, how do we make the budgets and turnaround times much more predictable? Um, how do you, you know, we want to help you get accurate plans, models for your design, development drawings, or if you simply want to onboard your home uh, onto the metaverse. So BIMIT, what is it? Uh, so it's a, it's a pay per model service. We want to deliver BIM in hours. We want to be able to deliver BIM at fixed low rates. BIM in an all-in-one file, meaning architectural, MEP, and furniture information, all as an existing conditions model. BIM for inventory, meaning 
you know, we can have the certainty that we can quantify spatial dimensions, quantities, et cetera. And then BIM it as an LOD 200 model, right? Something that you can predict, it's standardized. And, you know, we, we've heard a lot from, oh, we've outsourced our models here and there. We can never expect the same quality. Um, we're really focused on delivering uh, extremely predictable processes. So I oh, forgot to go to the next slide here, but effectively, what this means now is anyone that's 3D scanning a space, um, whether it's with your phone, whether it's with LIDAR based equipment, uh, Matterports, things like that, uh, we wanna be able to kind of help uh, digitize that for you. So currently we're providing three scopes, architectural, furniture and equipment, and MEP. So all scopes are modeled currently as a level of development LOD 200. Uh, so this means we're 3D modeling to a approximate geometry, sizing, location, and orientation. So at this time, we're not embedding additional metadata into these models. So we're not embedding, you know, product stickers or manufacturing or, you know, uh, lead time data. Um, we are using uh, Revit 2020 as our default software. It currently allows us to kind of use it on 2021, 2022. Unfortunately, we still can't downsave. Anyone here that knows how to do that, please uh, let us know. What this means at scale is that now owners can have an accurate depiction of their portfolio, right? They're able to compare apples to apples to apples. Architects can now scan to BIM almost any space. We're, uh, we've seen a few crazy um, requests like um, cemeteries and cathedrals and uh, an ancient city. We're not quite there yet, probably will be soon. But in the meantime, the majority of what we consider typical spaces uh, we can capture. Uh, data scientists can now study the ones and zeros being created within these models in a standard way. Metaverse owners, you guys can now recreate your office in the Decentraland or Sandbox or whatever you're looking to do. Um, so to break it down into a few simple steps. So as you can see, um, anyone currently on this call can just do this right now. You can drag and drop your registered point cloud. We're currently accepting most common point cloud formats. Uh, E57s, RCSs, PLYs, a few others. We do accept structured and unstructured point clouds. However, as some of you may know, uh, we always recommend LIDAR-based structured point clouds to increase the chances of, of accuracy. This is fairly straightforward, but step two is choose your preferred unit of measurement. For those um, in North America, probably Imperial, everywhere else, uh, probably metric. Step three is um, selecting your estimated size. So again, sometimes we understand that clients will send you out to 3D scan space precisely because they need to know the size. So we'll work with you to kind of confirm. So once you place your order, our team is gonna help verify which size in fact this falls under. Um, this allows us to determine the timeline and budget, right? So obviously a tier one, you know, for example, 1000 square foot space, which is approximately your average apartment, is vastly different than say a tier seven, 100,000 square foot warehouse, right? And so this helps us kind of determine the scope and complexity. Um, of course, um, as, as you guys saw before, you'll be able to choose your scope, uh, whether you, you want to add furniture and or MEP. Uh, a good rule of thumb to remember is if you cannot see it with your eyes, we cannot um, model it or process it. So if you request MEP, for example, mechanical electrical plumbing, and the MEP is not visible because it's hiding in the ceilings, we'll notify you via email whether or not you might want to modify or just cancel your order if, if maybe you've misunderstood. Um, I know the questions a lot of folks are maybe wondering is about accuracy. So short answer is we're pretty darn good. Um, that is, we'll 3D model everything that is clearly visible within your point cloud. Um, and we will model to the fidelity of that point cloud. So Obviously, for those that know, um, the higher kind of grade LiDAR equipment is going to give us an optimal result. Um, while your average iPhone 12 Pro now has uh, LiDAR, it's still very much in the kind of the generation one. So just be mindful that whatever tool you decide to use, um, it's going to be reflected uh, in that model, right? But in terms of the accuracy of the model itself, it's going to be one to one uh, with the point cloud shows. Step five, pretty straightforward, but we want to try to keep it as simple and as frictionless as possible. 
So um, we will take 50% upfront and then 50% upon completion of the model. Um, all rates are fixed and standardized, so it's not going to come as a surprise to what we charge. Um, that you should find, I believe, the tables uh, within um, the site itself. And then ultimately, depending on the size, we're going to process that. So as quick as 48 hours to, I believe, even the largest spaces, I think we've uh, standardized it to about 10 to 12 days for your average, you know, 100,000 square foot uh, fulfillment center or something like that. Uh, so we've gotten pretty good. Once we complete it, we're going to email you uh, based on the email you provided on the site. So um, there, you're going to be able to, within that email, download the, your zip folder. Um, and of course, if you decide to share that model with the world, um, we do provide a GLTF format that's pretty easily embeddable within platforms like Twitter and, and whatnot. Which is, we've seen a few users kind of um, get really excited about that. Um, within the zip uh, files themselves, we're including a few main file formats. First and foremost is a source file, Revit. Um, again, we're using Revit 2020. Uh, DWG, so we're including all of the CADs, one per floor. If you um, requested MEP, we're also including um, our uh, reflected ceiling plans, RCPs per floor. Um, we're including a GLTF file, so this is uh, something relatively new and a new advancement. In short, what this means is for the metaverse, uh, metaverse folks out there, take your file, upload it to Decentraland, Sandbox, et cetera. Um, we're certainly super excited about that. We uh, recently got a request yesterday to do a mall in, I believe, Illinois. So um, even vacant malls are going into the metaverse. So exciting times. Um, and so with that, I think we're nearing the end. Uh, this is just a screenshot of the sample model. Um, and yeah, for Q&A. So I think um, probably left out quite a bit. If anything, there's probably more questions than answers. Um, but I guess with that, maybe I'll pass it to Suli. She's probably got a better grasp of what questions might be being asked. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll mute myself and let Suli take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, it's good to see some familiar faces here. Um, we actually don't have any questions in the q a so now would be a great time um, for you guys to ask any questions you might have um, we've got austin pat alvaro and jose that could help us out here we just had a, a question come in uh, i can't find the cost points on your website uh, what is the uh, price points Yeah, maybe Austin, do you, you want to step in? Because I know we, um, what we want to make it uh, linked so that based on a tier, you'll know exactly what what those rates are. Do we currently have that up? Yeah, so the you, we can find the prices on the order page itself, and then um, Alvaro, I, I believe it's on the um, the FAQ. Gotcha. Okay. Thank yeah. You. So yeah. Gotcha. So if we go on, if you guys upload any point cloud to the sidebar and then you submit the order, you automatically will get the prices for the order depending on the corresponding tier and the selected scopes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Aaron, uh, can we upload BIM to Unreal? Yeah, that, so Aaron, that's totally possible. Um, we'll have like we'll have to see what's the actual files that you need to use in Unreal. I'm sure you can use GLTFs, uh, FBX as well, OBGs, and those are uh, files that we uh, can export out of uh, out of our N as well. So it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. 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 Great question. And Aaron, I, I, to that point, um, we're still trying to figure out. Um, and learn even more about, you know, our early users, right? So our earliest conversations have primarily been with um, a lot of architects, uh, a lot of engineers, um, but for folks working exclusively in the metaverse, um, Revit might not be the file format you need. Um, and yet it does allow us to export as a different 
file format, whether that be IFC, um, GLTF, FBX, whatever it might need. So uh, usually the answer is yes, um, it can be done, but uh, we can confirm. And I think the more we learn and get feedback from users, um, we can put that up on the FAQ section of the site just to have that super clear. Great. Uh, Alan wants to know, how about large point cloud files, more than 100 gigabytes? Austin? Yeah, for those cases, we, we do have an option to uh, submit a URL to us rather than upload directly. Um, so if you have it sitting somewhere, um, you know, like on a, on a cloud server or anything like that, then you can just um, send over that that link to us. Great, yeah, okay. I'm curious if, um, I'm curious, I guess, to know from, from some of the users that may be currently scanning, um, we've gotten um, a variety of answers back. Some folks 3D scan themselves, others maybe have some partner to 3D scan. I'm curious, uh, we've been hearing a lot of um, uh, iPhone, scanning actually particularly for like smaller like 1000 square foot spaces um that's getting pretty popular um others are exclusively like lidar based equipment more some of the more expensive Leicas and pharaohs um but we're trying to kind of accommodate for for all different point cloud formats then. right okay this next question is for jose uh how are clients property owners and uh, flex workspace using this tool as they prepare for return to office? Mm, great question. So um, I'm gonna try to answer concisely here. So BIMIT represents, uh, if, if our typical offering is A to Z, particularly for enterprise clients, um, BIMIT represents kind of that M to Z. So essentially we're now making it possible for direct consumers to essentially do what we do. While we're not 3D scanning ourselves, we'll help equip you with the 3D scanning capabilities. Now, with that said, for our enterprise offering, what we've seen is, uh, oh gosh, a variety of them. One organization, um, I'm sure everyone here on the call knows uh, that the organization, they have spaces all across the world from San Francisco, London, uh, New York, and all over. Um, their mergers and acquisitions teams uh, have asked us to step in when they acquire a small company, mid-sized company, or a large company. Uh, they're sending us out to uh, scan and model their spaces. So large operators like that, they're trying to understand and answer really some of the basic questions. Things like, one, uh, can you help us see what we own, right? And so tools like Matterport, um, and other photogrammetry based equipment helps us produce the virtual tours and high resolution images. Uh, tools like Leicas uh, and Pharaohs help us produce the uh, construction grade point clouds. Um, ultimately, we're taking all of that information, converting that into information models, and then presenting that in our enterprise platform called IPX, where we're just simply organizing uh, this for these uh, companies to be able to see what they own, verify that their plans are accurate, um, and quantify their inventory, things like desks and chairs. Um, that's really, you know, regardless if it's offices or gyms uh, or academic spaces, these fundamental problems like everyone has, right? Some combination of we need to see what we own, we need to verify that it's accurate, and we need to count stuff. Um, COVID is kind of a uh, Made, made the issue even more apparent, right? As folks are now working from home to just to have the ability to see their space um, even when they can. So um, ho hopefully that addresses the uh, question. Awesome. Um, Austin, this next question, I believe is for you. Uh, what is the best way to submit a Matterport scan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the way that users typically go about that is uh, right, uh, getting the matter pack um, for Matterport, and then from there you can uh, download that and, and upload it uh, through our order page. Okay. Um, I have another question here. Have you had any tests where people have put their scanner up in ceiling spaces? 
has the model come out fairly cleanly? If that has been done, I am thinking healthcare spaces. Yeah, maybe Pat can can jump into this, but I'm pretty sure we've uh, there was a few examples of like data centers where we pop where we had um, some of our clients pop ceiling tiles or floor tiles. Pat, I don't know if maybe you have more more concrete examples. Yeah, sure. We did have scans above the ceiling. They were pretty much uh, not very congested ones. Some of them came out good, but in general, you have to be very careful on scanning. And on healthcare, we know that that might be very congested uh, ceiling. So it all depends on the scanning. Yeah. Yeah, we, we um, as, as always, we strongly recommend using LiDAR-based um, equipment. Um, some of our uh, partners have done a combination of Matterport scanning to capture in high resolution the imagery in virtual tours, as well as the Leica-based uh, or ferro based or something a little bit more powerful to make sure that we're able to capture in high detail the HVAC ducts, the piping, um, et cetera. Um, but it absolutely can be done. It's just obviously a, a lot trickier and certainly a lot more coordination uh, on site for those 3D scanning. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we're nearing time. So we do have a few more questions, but um, before we get back into that, I wanted to drop you guys the Discord link. Uh, we would love for you all to uh, join our community and uh, you know give us your feedback. Um, chat with us, let us know what you've uh, been working on, what you got going on. Uh, I just sent the Discord link to the chat if anyone wants to go ahead and join. And our next question, uh, is this product using the Autodesk Forge platform to create these Revit models? Uh, Pat, could you answer that for us? Sure. Uh, we're using Revit to model these, uh, the model from point cloud to model. So the model is on Revit, but it can uh, be uploaded to Forge as Revit model and uh, Forge platform will run it uh, as a 3D space. Okay. Um, Chris wants to know, is it possible to preview pricing without first uploading a model? It sounded like the answer was yes, but could the team provide a link? I'm not finding it in FAQ. How can we help Chris out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, so I think on our end, let's make it, let's try to make it if we haven't already connected it. Because, um, yeah, Chris is right. Ultimately, if we can have the prices show um, in right up front, that's the goal. Um, Chris, in the meantime, I happen to know one of the channels in the Discord, I believe, does provide um, pricing. And uh, uh, you're actually one of the earliest members, right? So you have the, the lifetime uh, membership. So it's particularly important for you as well. Uh, I'll make sure within the Discord to, to uh, one of us could, could link you to that link. In the meantime, while we get this on, on the page. Awesome. Okay, well, we don't have any more questions for now. Um, I think we could give you guys um, a couple more seconds to get, in, get any last minute questions in. That one just came in. Is the process completely automated in the background with possibly some QC oversight or is anything done by hand? Yeah, great question. So the short answer is both, right? In order to uh, completely automate something, uh, we need tons and tons and tons of iterations and data to be able to do that. So in the process, we were using a hybrid approach where um, a lot of the uh, initial order requests, importing Revit, QA, QC, some plugins we've designed to kind of auto check um, is, is underway. Uh, the modeling still is being done by uh, our senior specialists, right? So it's a combination of both. Um, what we could see, right, is that we kind of created the infrastructure to um, create a deep enough data set where we can actually run, right, these uh, segmentation challenges, right, of being able to identify walls, floors, doors, et cetera. Um, but in, right now for the moment, I think 
Um, the goal is, yes, our, our senior team is very much uh, QAQCing a lot of these projects to make sure um, we're following a, 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 essentially a construction grade level of, of accuracy. All right. Great. So that looks like uh, all the questions uh, we have uh, for today, uh, Jose. Yeah, no, everyone, thanks for thanks for joining in. Um, this is just the start. If you're on this call, you're probably one of the earliest users. I mean, we literally just uh, launched this today. You'll notice um, we are uh, very much going to be pushing out uh, messages throughout these next days, weeks, et cetera. Um, the folks here on the call are, you know, we value um, your time and feedback uh, more so than anyone. You guys have actively said you guys are interested in this. So um, we'd love to work with you as we roll out, develop and evolve this product offering. Um, we'd love to stay in contact via Discord. Um, I believe tomorrow we have a mass uh, social media post scheduled that I think Alvaro can speak to. I think he's gonna be announcing it on, um, on the Discord. It would mean so much to us if you uh, helped us kind of spread the word. Um, Right now, we've got a pretty good uh, uh, process. Uh, we're really confident in the, in the product. And so, yeah, with that, um, guys, it's live. So if there's a particular project you guys wanna submit, um, go ahead and do so. If for whatever reason you run into any issues or have any questions, uh, we're gonna be live answering questions on Discord and we'll be sure to you know, more comprehensively answer um, any, any remaining questions here uh, via email as well as on Discord. So. Um, Thanks again for everyone's time. I know we're slightly over. Um, hopefully you guys don't have too many Zoom meetings today. Hopefully this was one of the more entertaining or informative ones. Um, yeah, guys, please stay um, close uh, to us. We're excited to hear your feedback. And with that, yeah, have a, have a safe rest of the day. And thanks, thanks for joining. All right, team. Thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks everyone.